Welcome everyone to the Healthy School Food Summit brought to you by the Coalition for Healthy School Food and Plant Pure. I'm your host, Ron Gandiza. And in this session, I'm honored to have with us Doug Schmidt. Doug is a veteran elementary school teacher of 23 years in the Victor Central School District. His journey to plant-based nutrition began with a heart attack at age 49. Looking to wean himself off of all prescription medication, he discovered the book Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. Armed with that book and a great personal doctor, he lost 60 pounds and is now off all medications. Now at age 58, he ran his first half marathon and is training for a marathon. He presently holds the position of health and wellness coordinator for Victor Central Schools. In a former life, he was bakery trainer for Wegmans Food Markets, developing new ideas and programs for their bakeries. And he now uses his cooking and baking expertise to develop wonderful plant-based recipes to share with others. Welcome, Doug. How are you? Hi, Ron. Pleasure meeting you. I'm doing just great on this day. Well, you know, it's funny. This is the first time we've been face-to-face, -face, but I've heard of your work from a couple of different people. One from Amy Hamlin uh, with the Coalition for Healthy School Food in Plant Pure with the pod program. And like I said, I just heard great things about you from a number of different people about the uh, programs that you're running and how you're trying to influence your community. Well, thanks so much. Um, I was an early adopter of uh, the Plant Pure Nation information. Um, so I was right in there with the pods right from the beginning. Well, so tell me a bit more about your story before we get into the school system. I understand you had a you heart, a heart attack. Is that the first time you were introduced to plant-based after the heart attack? Of plant -based well, well, it was a little slow coming. I was uh, not a, a uh, believer in the beginning. Um, after I had a heart attack, I was 49. Um, I was concerned about being on these drugs um, long-term, and I didn't want to be on them. Um, so I Googled um, for, um, heart disease and found... Um, Caldwell Esselstyn's book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. And I read it, and I agreed with it, but I go, this is too extreme. You know, everything in moderation that became my mantra. And I um, did that for about a year until I had a scare that they rushed me to the uh, hospital by ambulance again um, and went inside and took a look. Luckily, there was no work done at that time. They said, well, wait and see. There's some blockages. But that's when I became serious about it. And I went back to Caldwell Esselstyn's book and started following it um, to the letter. So how long ago was that? Um, that was uh, nine years ago today that I had my heart first heart attack. Um, then it was about a, a year later, and it, it – was still a gradual thing to change a lifetime of habits was not an easy thing, but um, I've been full on um, uh, Dr. Esselstyn's plan for the past two and a half years. Tell us a little more about what you do in the school system. In my school district, we're in a, a suburb of Rochester, um, a very traditional uh, suburban school. Um, about two years ago, they had an opening for health and wellness coordinator. And a couple people recommended that I apply for it. And I said, you know, sure. I, I, if I can help people, that would be great. So I applied for it and I got it. And it's sort of an adjunct position. I, I don't do it full time. I'm a teacher full time, but this is in addition to my regular duties. And it's primarily working with staff. Um, so my first year doing that, I did the Plant Pure Jumpstart, and we had 36 people, and those 36 people um, had amazing results after the 10 days, and um, we probably had over half of them continue eating plant-based after that. Uh, then this year, we held another one, and we had 56 people involved with the people that continued from last year as coaches. And this is for people who may not understand what a, a jumpstart is. So the plant pure jumpstart being experiencing a, a plant-based diet for, for 10 days. Yes. And we had biometrics taken um, before and after. So people could see their changes in a short period of time. And they were just in awe of what they experienced. 
So these are the teachers at your schools. Correct. Teachers, staff, um, administration. Um, this year I had a couple administrators participating, um, a bunch of people up at the bus garage, um, and the majority were teachers. Well, so what were some of the benefits that they were seeing? Um, drop in cholesterol by 50 points. Um, the average weight drop was, I think, six pounds in the week, um, with a couple reaching 10, 12 pounds in, 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 in the 10 days. Um, we had um, lowered blood pressure. Um, we had people who um, had high blood sugar that w- and blood pressure that was um, in danger zones, and they came down with the normal ranges in 10 days. How did you find people to even want to try this program? First year, it was a little hard. Um, I I just put out a newsletter to everybody um, and mentioned the benefits, um, putting an emphasis on um, being healthier. And I said, I only have 30 some odd slots. Um, First come, first serve. And people signed up and I had to actually... Uh, stop people um, because I could only take 30 because it was being partially subsidized by our insurance company. So um, that year it was a uh, kept to a minimum. This last year it was open to anybody and um, we had that kind of response. Now you said subsidized. So can you explain a little bit more about what the comp- insurance company did? Um, in our school district, our health insurance company has created a consortium of local school districts that all pay a percentage of their premium into this consortium so we can share ideas and share initiatives and um, have a little uh, funds for initiatives that we may want to try in the school district. And they do it as sort of a, a way to test new ideas. Um, so when I had this idea, the person who um, coordinates the program, I referred him to this jumpstart, and could we somehow get him to pay for a little bit of it? And what he ended up doing was paying for half the food um, because we ordered the food from Plant Pure the first year, and um, he paid for half the food and he paid for the biometrics. So the cost to the participant was only about $70, um, which also included the Plant Pure Nation cookbook. Um, so it was, it was a pretty good deal for the employee. Now, what were some of the challenges that you would say that you faced? Um, some people, the majority of people adored the food. Um, there were a few that didn't, but we had the cookbook, and they said, can we just cook from the cookbook? And I said, by all means, yes. And they had the same results as the people who ate the food, um, making their own food. So that was great. Um, The the one problem we sort of had is because of the cost, even though the cost was low, um, there were certain people on staff that could never afford it, Um, like some of our custodial staff or some of the bus garage people or people on a, a more restrictive income. Um, so this year we, we did something a little different and all it was was the cost of a uh, cookbook. And I just upped my day to day, um, contact with them by sending out newsletters and videos and, um, uh, ideas to help them with the transition. Is this within all of Victor central schools? Is there multiple? Yes. Schools? We're a small school district. We have, uh, about 4,500 students. So staff, um, we, we have much less, of course, but still, um, we're one of the larger suburban school districts in the area. Do students even know what the teachers are going through or staff? Um, some of my students know where I'm at. They know I don't eat meat. They know I don't eat dairy. Um, we've had some discussion on it, and I work with the little ones, first through third. Um, it is sort of a... Uh, can be a political topic, so I have to choose my words carefully. Um, but um, there are some influences. I, I'm the enrichment teacher for the district for uh, first through third, which means I get to do special programs with the kids. 
And this past year, I got permission to te teach four nutrition classes to the second graders. So all second graders got four nutrition classes um, where I talked about the four most important foods that they should eat. And they learned that it was fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. Even though a lot of them would say dairy or protein. I said, nope, you can live without dairy. You don't need dairy to survive. Um, so, and, and I tell the kids, you know, am I telling you you can't have your cookie? Am I telling you you can't have that hot dog? No, because I have to sort of be careful because some parents would find that a, um, a problem. But, I, but nobody can disagree with you got to eat your fruits and veggies. And so that, um, so now students know that about me and they know why those things are healthy. What did you have to go through to even, uh, I guess, get approval, you know, to, to run a four classes for, for second graders? Uh, my first year as health and wellness coordinator, one of the first meetings I brought up um, some of the, the national data on children coming down with type 2 diabetes, um, the obesity, rise in BMI uh, across the nation. And Victor is no, um, uh, isn't an exemption from that. And our school nurses who are on our health and wellness committee also said, oh yeah, you know, we've seen a rise in the BMI. So um, it was sort of an easy sell. At least we should get them eating more plant-based or more fruits and vegetables. So the committees thought, Sure, let's try this this year. And teachers are always game for somebody else to take their class and teach them something. So um, it was an easy sell with the um, teachers as well. So how's the menu system at your school? So I'm not sure if it's even propagated in terms of the ideas of more plant-based options, but do you have plant-based op options at your menu? Um, this past year, we um, hired a new um, director of food, uh, and um, we're in discussion. Um, in some ways, she's old school um, with her ideas. Um, she is a nutritionist. Um, she has done some interesting things. Um, there was our local humane society um, came in. They had they brought in a chef and taught um, plant based recipes to. Um, all the food service staff. Um, they typically try to have some healthier options. I wouldn't say they're fully whole food plant-based or even vegetarian, but um, they're trying to go that way. They're, um, they have tried with more whole grain, like, you know, the whole grain pizza. You know, it's still not the healthiest thing, but it's whole grain. Right. Um, it, it's, I think it's going to be a long road. Um, between that and some of the national requirements that we are just stuck in, um, it, it, it's going to be hard. But you're making progress, at least with the teachers. You have some teachers that have experienced this, and at a minimum, you can start to, with, with staff, at least you, know, you, you have some people understanding a little more about what the plant-based... Well, what's interesting is because of some of this, some of the teachers have changed their, how can I teach the USDA food plate? How can I do that in good conscience? Um, and I said, well, how about teach them the Harvard food plate, which is a little healthier, um, and you don't have to worry about the dairy aspect because that's not in the Harvard food plate. So I have some teachers saying, aha, uh, maybe I'll do that. I uh, have other teachers saying, I'm not going to allow unhealthy snacks into my classroom. Um, so she, uh, this one teacher sending home a letter to, to parents saying, these are healthy snacks. These are not healthy snacks. So I, it, it's my emphasis has changed the past year or so into sort of changing one person or one teacher at a time. If I get administrators on board, then because they've changed their way of eating, it'll make it easier making changes in the school. If I change teachers, they in good conscience can't teach what they know to be wrong. 
So it, it's a gradual thing. I have school nurses. I had a, a couple school nurses do the jump start, and they're asking me, send me more information, send me more information. So this is all good. The um, junior high home and careers teacher said, she reached out to me knowing I'm plant-based and said, um, I'd like to do something more with plant-based, but I don't know what. And I shared a cookbook with her with some recipes, and she just had a, a, a course in her classroom where they made um, plant-based fajitas or plant-based tacos. So they got to pick their own toppings and add their own things, everything from tofu to just uh, rice and beans and um, quinoa and things. And she said it was one of the highest um, commented classes or courses she taught, and it was such a success she's going to do it again. Wow. Now that's something we'd like to share with other teachers, you know, what you can do. And this is, this is really good stuff, Doug. It, it's, you know, it's, it's one person at a time. You change them and, and they start looking at how to, can I change this in my classroom? So where do you go now? Where, how, what, what's your action plan, if you will, for the next year or two years? Um, recently, I went to a presentation in Rochester on the Blue Zones. Um, and um, what I've done is I've bought my whole health and wellness committee a copy of the book. And I'm going to have that as their summer work to read that book. And how can we incorporate these healthy ideas into our school district, into our classroom? And use that as, I, I figure it might be a gentler way of easing them in because the Blue Zones talk about leaning plant-based, more uh, leaning more plant-based. So with that concept, with that thought, okay, now if we're all talking about leaning plant-based, what does that mean? So, so I'm hoping next year, having that same vocabulary, we can start making changes. It just reminds me of just how badly we need to get teachers talking to other teachers and schools talking to other schools and really creating a, a network, a, a communication or collaboration network where we're, we're sharing these best practices. Because some of the things you just mentioned, I actually had not heard. And I've, I've talked to a number of other schools. Well, it, it, it's so hard. What I learned this past year was a, a couple things about our food system. If you take um, money from the government for breakfast and lunch, for you know, free and reduced lunch, you have to serve milk. You can't have some of the options that you have if you didn't take that. We'd be all free and clear to do whatever we wanted if we didn't take the uh, national money. But with taking that money, we are limited on certain things we can do. So part of my thought was, um, okay, let's take a look at it from a different angle. And teachers were, was one angle. Another angle is I really think it's the parents that need to um, bring this to the table um, because if the parents voice their concerns, um, things get done, even with national um, limitation you know the school district will listen to the parents um, so that's the other avenue I want to take this year we have a couple people on our uh, health and wellness committee that are um, parents um, so I, I'm taking it to them saying if you want change you got to help me here now, so have you, heard, have you heard anything actually from parents in general because you uh, obviously you've been running the program with the second graders for instance or have parents said anything in as far as a concern or support or any way in any which way? Well, what's interesting is since I've been in the district for the past 20 some odd years, people have know me, parents know me, families know me. Um, and they've seen my weight change. And so it's, you know, Doug, what happened? And I can tell them and it's, it's dialogue. Um, right now I have one parent who's on the committee, who's a, nurse um, practitioner and she is is starting to go more plant-based and she comes into our school and does try the rainbow 
where she brings down to the cafeteria during lunch a fruit rainbow and have the kids sample different things. Um, she does some other like um, hygiene type things, washing hands and stuff classes as well. Well, we have dialogue about how do we get healthier, and she's starting to bring her children over to it. They're, they've sw- they've cut the dairy down, if not reduced it all the way, um, and they're starting to eat more plant based. So she's I, I'm constantly sharing things with her, and she's right now my key person to try to make change. I also have a couple that I've known for a while and the husband was having health issues and I mentioned plant-based eating and sent them home with a copy of Forks Over Knives and they started making a change. So if I can make changes, even one family at a time, that's going to have a rippling effect across the district and across the community. Do you share other documentaries? I mean, cause you mentioned Forks Over Knives, but is that something where the teachers as part of the program watch Forks Over Knives or, or is it pretty much just smaller videos rather than a full document? Well, the other thing I have is um, this year I purchased a lending library for the staff. And in there I have almost every single plant-based uh, cookbook, plant-based. Uh, I have the China Study, the Starch Solution, um, Engine 2, all their books. I have all of Plant Pures. I also have um, Eating You Alive, the, the documentary. I have What the Health. I have Plant Pure Nation and Forks Over Knives, all able to be loaned out to people. Um, so this lending library, um, which right now is probably almost 75 books, um, doubles and triple copies. Literally, I have something for everybody. If somebody says, Doug, I'm fighting diabetes, I go, here, take Neil Barnard's book. Um, If somebody is struggling with heart disease and high cholesterol, I say, here's prevent and reverse heart disease. Um, If you just want to eat healthier, here's John McDougall's latest book, um, The Healthiest Diet on the Planet. So I can really almost um, tailor what I give teachers and staff based on their needs. I'm predicting some exponential growth for your programs. I I think so. It's been sort of, um, uh, sort of a grassroots type thing. I, um, with our coaches that we had for the jumpstart, they're sort of in place in different buildings. So if anybody has a question, they know they can go to that person and they know that if that person can't answer it, I can, and I'm only an email away. Um, so it is growing. I mean, just going from 30 some odd teachers and staff to 50 some odd teachers and staff, that's a big growth. And, um, different people that I never would have thought have started coming up to me, sharing their medical problems saying, Doug, I need help. Um, and in, um, I've made connections here in the local area. Um, Dr. Ted Barnett, he runs a Rochester Lifestyle Medicine. And so I can refer people to him. Um, Carrie Graff, another doctor that works with Barnett, Ted Barnett, I can refer people to her. So um, it's, I have resources, not just, oh, it's Doug's latest fad diet. No, I have actual resources. Um, Just, Last month, I was asked to be keynote speaker at another school district's health and wellness day and gave a 30-minute speech on the benefits of plant-based nutrition. So, yes, it's going to be – I think it's going to just open up here in the next few years. Well, in retrospect, now that you've got this program, two years now, you're away in your second year, uh, what are the lessons learned that you'd want to share with another organization? If you could go back and redo, what would you do differently? Is it, that's a, a great question. I, Cause in some ways I think I did things pretty well, even though I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I, I give them the recommendations. If they want to do a jump start, start small. If they want to do the jump start, um, I sent out daily newsletters And people really responded to those daily newsletters. I typically would put a video in there from uh, nutritionfacts.org. I put a recipe 
and I, I put some, um, some of the rationale for why to eat plant-based, whether it was something on heart disease or diabetes or just the benefits of eating plant-based. And those became things that when it was all done, the um, participants said, I'm going to miss your emails. So now I have a monthly email newsletter that goes out to staff members separate from my other email as health and wellness coordinator. Um, and on this list, I have about 100 people. Anytime anybody says, Doug, tell me a little bit more about plant-based. Well, I'll put you on my newsletter if you don't mind. So in, in the district, I have that many more. And it, I think the biggest thing is, in some ways, giving people, letting them know that the information's there, but not pummeling them with it. And um, a lot of times um, letting people come to me um, instead of saying, you know, you could lose that weight if you ate plant-based um, because some people aren't ready to hear it. But when they are ready to hear it, they come running to the door. Um, and, and we've had case after case in our district already of people who have done that, whether um, a partner came down with uh, some illness or whatever. Um, we've been there to direct them in the right direction. Um, the other aspect with the district, um, it is a hard road. Um, not a lot of people want to listen, but it, it's little changes that we made. Um, some of the people that were in the first jump start, they started noticing that at district functions, there weren't any plant-based options on the table for like a meeting, you know, Oh, we have a luncheon and there's cold cut sandwiches and maybe a salad, but nothing else that we can eat. So now the um, social committee says we will have plant-based options at any event that we have. So it's a gradual thing. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take some years to change a culture and it's a firmly ingrained culture, but it's those little steps and building on those little steps. And with each change, um, acceptance becomes uh, more readily accepted. This year I ran a, for the staff a ditch the dairy 10 day challenge. And I, the first year I don't think I could have done that. The second year I did it, I had about um, 40 participants and um, I did a little survey afterwards and said, how has your, eating habits change, well, I'm going to cut back on dairy or I'm cutting dairy out of my diet altogether. So it's those little things and, they, and you just have to build on each one. You say little things and I understand what you mean, but to me, you've actually made a lot of progress. Doug. This isn't small. These are little changes. These are actually somewhat substantial, um, you know, in that you've got a number of things that people are taking steps that people are taking in a relatively short period of time. You know, you've only been doing this a couple of years and I see, I'd love to catch up with you and see how things are going, you know, later Thank on. And, and if people have questions, cause I know you don't necessarily have a website as, as a teacher, but is it all right if they contact you for information? Sure. They can contact me at my school email, which is Schmidt D at Victor org. Or my wife and I have an email, eatplantslove at gmail.com. And they can reach us there as well. Eatplantslove at gmail.com. Yes. And um, I just made a Facebook page today on um, plant-based schools. Because like you mentioned, um, I, I, there's no place to really connect people to have a dialogue. And I, I do want to connect with other schools, other teachers. What are they doing? So if they want to join that group, maybe we can get some synergy here and get uh, people talking and sharing ideas. Excellent. Excellent idea. And, um, and we have a Healthy School Food or a Coalition for Healthy School Food Facebook group as well. And I think with the plant-based schools together, uh, again, that collaboration, we can never have too much communication. You know what I mean? I, I Anything to get the word out. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this, Doug. Thank you, Ron. It was great talking with you. And uh, for everyone else uh, here on the uh, call, 
if you want to find out more information about the Coalition for Healthy School Food, just visit healthyschoolfood.org. That's healthyschoolfood.org for more resources, especially for teachers and for schools to learn more about the programs that are being done, especially up in New York uh, for the Coalition for Healthy School Foods, where they've made a lot of progress there. And if you want to find out more about Plant Pure Nation, about the Plant Pure Jumpstart program, just go to plantpurenation.com. You can learn more about the 10-day jumpstarts that Doug has talked about here and the meals as well. So again, thank you very much. And thank you, Doug. Take care.